because we're we're just finishing this hike and or we're getting towards the end of it and actually no here well i'll finish this story then i'll tell another story but as we're walking i heard the rattle and i thought it was someone shooting a drone up in the air so i started i was just like oh that's a weird noise i started looking for this drone and then off to the side was this rattler which in reality we weren't that close to this guy to where you would think the rattle would be necessary yeah i'm i'm curious uh i am curious about that because even the kids that stumbled upon it with us they we were close What's up, man? You know, not much. Just, uh, just enjoying the new GoPro I bought. Um, I'm really excited to get into it. Um, I had the GoPro Hero Four Black, a couple of those in a session, which were awesome. They're fun to toy around with. But uh, you know, I thought it was time to upgrade, and I finally got the GoPro Hero Max right here nice camera i played around with it tonight took it down to duck creek um put it in the river drove the car down the river got some videos really excited getting ready to play around with that um some more and you know taking it places some of the places we've been gone you know i'm kind of wishing we would have had it when we we're in angel's landing <laughs> yeah that would have been dope to have it because like you can move cliffs on each side mm -hmm. oh beautiful but yeah, that would have been nice I'm, that is the nice thing about GoPros just in general, how it's kind of this wide view. Um, it really wide angled it. The yeah. zoom's not there or anything, but shoot. You know, you know actually on this one, I'm gonna pull it up and I'm really excited. And like if GoPro, hey, I've been shouting you out forever. I've been repping the GoPro brand, but I can actually, there's a my, there's a 13 mm zoom there's a 16 mm zoom there's a 27 there's the linear at 19 they have different zooms on this one that are pretty good actually is so the way the frames cut how it looks it's on a very awesome stable stabilization like i'm messing around with it right now it's holding really good it's moving nice i'm super excited to use it it's oh it's looking good and like this wide this super wide angle is just it's gnarly man <laughs> yeah no i love the wide angle um the few times that i've really been able to capture it you know at like horseshoe bend that's a great place for it because you can really get it wide um and oh. then i got that video of the first time i was at arches where i'm underneath that one arch and you can see on both sides of it which is really yeah cool. you know so when you get like prime times where the wide angle really works it can turn out really really well no i got i'm looking at some of the videos right now i got like look at that that's just super clear view you got the rocks the sky a little bit of everything i'm super excited i i'm playing around with it i'm looking at it i'm loving it um GoPro has been something I've always been a part of. I loved it. I had the Hero 2 even. And actually, I never know what happened to that, my Hero 2. Um, last I know, it was it was in, like, at the office. And it just disappeared one time. Oh, damn. So, that sucks. Yeah, I have no clue where that is. And I was repping that for the time. But who knows? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, yeah. I've been repping GoPro forever. You know, yeah, that was it. my, it was an impulse buy for me, bought a GoPro thinking it would get me outside more. And, uh, if by golly, I think it worked. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. No, I think that was an awesome decision you made, uh, and did, I mean, definitely it, it forces you to go do something, get out of your comfort zone and go do something that you're not 
normally do and then I, I i like it i love doing this this kind of stuff um i've done quite a few few videos myself even in high school i did like some documentary videos and throughout my work career i have and gopro kind of falls into that as like my little fun side hobby what i like about taking videos uh, you know like i got some of the jeep i'm excited to to play around with it now i really am trying to hammer down the 360 view that it does because there's a camera on both sides which i really like and it it is able to do this 360 and if i can show people going down the bear tooth pass or going up up the drive to you know west rosebud lake just different hikes and different stuff we've done i think it would be it would be really cool i mean why not make it happen yeah, no, that'd be, that'd be that'd be the legit to see for sure. Yeah, exactly. Sure. I just gotta hammer it down and get back to it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that goes back to kind of our message: is just going out and doing things, even exactly. if it's just a day on your weekend, an afternoon, whatever. Just going out doing something. Oh, exactly. I mean sometimes you just get get to doing too much you you forget about it and i mean like talking with matt buddy uh last time and he talked about you know we talked about south dakota we didn't even get into all of it you know we we oh, know. we had some stuff coming up we wanted to talk about you know you know the badlands uh deadwood wall drug all these weird little places in south dakota you know that when you're driving out there, you gotta, you gotta see, you gotta do it because you're there because you're going to be driving for a little while lo longer to the next place. Um, you know, and that's part of getting out and doing it. You know, you, you know, there's a little town called wall drug, South Dakota, where it was just a drugstore where you could get free water back in the old traveling days when it was hard to go from town to town, you know, you could only go 20 miles at a time or 50 miles, hundred miles in a day. You know, that was, that was how travel worked. Now we can go, you know, thousands of miles at a time. You know, you can still flight. get free water there. No, yes, you can. And you, you get can the bumper still, sticker. Yep, you can still get free water if anyone's curious. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fun. It's a cool little town. It's a tourist town. Um, right next to the Badlands. You can drive right in. I, I, yeah. I mean, I stayed at a hotel in Waldrug one time uh, to go into the Badlands. Um, and then the campgrounds in the Badlands, we got to stay there that time. Yeah, the campgrounds are pretty cool. Um, I mean, you know, it's it's grassland, so there's no trees, which <laughs> isn't uh, ideal for my hammock setup that I take everywhere with me. So, but I mean, I jerry rigged it because they had the little overhang over the picnic basket. <laughs> yes, they did the shade because it gets yeah. so hot out there. Yeah, so. I hung it up on there, so I still slept in my hammock, but um, it just wasn't in a tree. Well, the stars that night, it was such a clear night. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, speaking of stars, uh, Parasite's meteor shower peaks tonight, um, <laughs> which after this, that's where I'm going. I, I'm, really? I'm going to see if there's if I have good views of the stars, but you no, know, we had a lot of clouds today, so I don't think I'll see it good. So, well, you won't see the peak. You won't see the peak. Um, if you miss today, it's around until like the 24th, but I mean, today they say you can see a hundred meteors in an hour. So, wow. right. So it's like one a minute. Yeah. So I'm almost, trying to almost two. <laughs> almost, almost. So I'm trying to hopefully catch some of it, which will be pretty legit. Yeah, no, I that's cool. I, that's exciting. I mean, I might try and go out. Tyler's actually here. He's uh I hooked him up on this documentary. It's called uh, the the Great Human Odyssey. And it's about kind of the missing link, that kind of stuff, about where man came from, kind of the geolo geology geological kind of what we found archaeological ways of things mm -hmm. um actually i got turned on to it by a professor he was a professor at uh the montana state university um when i was actually out in yellowstone i did a training out there uh with some native um uh, folks and we talked about like the native project um this tp project i was doing out at uh, pompey's pillar and getting the tribes together and working with tribes and how to do that and talking with like the national parks foundation and the 
um, uh, uh, Lewis and Clark Trail Society, and we're we're doing different things uh, based on that, and um, we were out there training, and it was just it was a good time. <laughs> I kind of lost my train of thought there. I got a I got a Facebook message. And it threw me off. I got was that little ding you heard. I was just like, yeah. you get a ding every time we do one of these. So. Well, and that was a weird one. Like I don't well, usually. I just, do I've learned to just fade them off. You know, here <laughs> ding, it's just not no big deal. <laughs> no, I apologize, but yeah, no, we did that training, and actually, he was a he was one of the uh, he was a crow guy, um, and he gave us talks about each of the place and kind of how he was traditional, but understood like we have to turn contemporary in this time and understand because that's how we as native people are going to uh, thrive and survive you know like um our you know we have to respect our culture and understand it and still practice it in the ways we do today but also to grow we need to educate ourselves and learn and understand he was he was really good we're talking about that we we had some good conversations he turned me on to this documentary the great human odyssey and it, it, it's really good. He's actually in it and it talks about the Clovis people here in North America and them being some of the first, um, first blood that you can find. And actually when people take those DNA tests, uh, if you're Native American, a lot of time you turn up similar, you have like 98, 97% Clovis in you. And that, um, that's kind of one of those things that it's like, you can prove that a lot of the Native Americans, a lot of the DNA that came to it, came over that bearing land land strait when it was open during the Ice Age. Um, oh, and that's yeah, when like, yeah. the Americas were co- conquered. But what's also interesting is you can find DNA evidence in South America that like dates the same as that land strait. And they've they figured out with like canoes and different uh like patterns that the islanders had that they would follow the stars and the connection to the stars and how they would be able to navigate and get to those places so it's really like kind of like this is what we think but it probably happened but there's other ways that it could have happened and other things that could have happened we just we just don't know because no one's really cared to document it or really fight for it you know we just kind of took what was said as what was said and how it was documented and usually when you look at history, that's how you have to look at it. Is like, we just went with what was documented. Yeah. You got to think about what wasn't documented. Yeah, or uh, what was documented and then burned, you know. So, yeah, that too. <laughs> there's a ton of that kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, we kind of wandered away there, but. Well, I want to <laughs> I want to stay on kind of a similar topic. Um, right. Because, I, I mean, I was curious. I mean, are you familiar with, the legendary basketball coach Phil Jackson. He's from Montana, and I do uh, have, I, I do have a comment to make um, about the Michael Jordan documentary and a quote he had in that. And I, I, Jordan or Phil? I find it I find it really disrespectful as a Native American um, that he's going to send high praise to Native Americans and talk about. Um, talk about them in like such a like holy light in that way like oh i'm blessed i gotta spend some time and learn from them and understand them but he misquoted the he i don't know if it was a misquote or an ignorant comment or what it was but he talks about the poplar indian reservation there's no poplar indian reservation i mean and 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 the tribes he said that were there like there's a town of Poplar and it's the Assiniboine Sioux that live there. And it was just kind of, it was a comment like that and it, it took me off guard, but that's my, that's my Phil Jackson comment of the night. Well, I, I was going to, because um, when I go on bike rides and stuff on these bike rides or honestly, any cardio, I listen yeah. to audio books. I call them cardio books. <laughs> but um, anyways, I'm listening to one that Phil Jackson wrote called 11 rings right now and it's actually pretty good but he talks about how um growing up in montana and then going to north dakota you know he he knew he knows a lot of like native people specifically he talks about lakota people a lot oh yeah 
the Lakota tribe. And um, he talks about how he used the things that he learned about like native culture and st- native culture and stuff in his uh, coaching. And wow. yeah, it's actually, I mean, I guess he got a lot of crap for it from other coaches and stuff. Cause they'd be like, man, this is some crazy foo-foo stuff, but I mean, he didn't care. He He's an interesting guy. Cause you know, his, his parents were both Christian ministers, mom and dad were both Christian ministers. So he grew up Christian ministry, but then I would say more of his spiritual path went along with more of the Native American teachings or even Zen Buddhism. He talks a lot about Zen Buddhism. Yeah, no, and I, I don't I don't knock the fact that he understands it and doesn't do it. I just the comment on that documentary being what it is, it's like if you're gonna make such a like praise for it, get it right. Like there's no poplar reservation in Montana. There's a town called Poplar. Shit, he's old just, though. It, Maybe he's going crazy. I understand, but I, it's just like have have the respect for the people um because there's still people there's still people living there you know um and it, yeah that's just kind of where i'm at but no i believe it because because another do- fun fact and i only the only reason i even think about this is so his mom grew up in wolf point phil jackson's mom grew up in that's wolf that's, that's where thea's from yeah, and I was just like, oh, no way. So, like, a town that's got, like, 15 people, there's this one person that happens to be there. Yeah, no, but, like, but that's what I'm saying is Poplar is, like, close to Wolf Point. So, it's, like, the comment was probably, uh, it just, it, it kind of just bugs me because it's, like, come on, you know better. Yeah. Um, but, no, it, uh, but I believe it because if you look at, like, successful, like, state basketball champions, and the reason I say state, you know, I look at the high school level, because a lot of reservations, you know, that's where you have an all native team. Um, but you also, a lot of kids, they don't get recruited because, you know, not a lot of coaches want to go to a reservation or recruit a kid. Um, even though, you know, you look at like Florida state and Raekwon Evans and, you know, he's one of their better players and, you know, he's a native crow kid from, you know, Billings here. And you, you look at, um, look at the style, the, the res ball style. There's a documentary on Netflix called basketball or nothing. It talks about the Navajo nation. And, but you go to every reservation, basketball is life. Ball is life. You know, water is life. It's the same. They, the two go hand in hand, you know, and the, it's, it's such a, it's such a, it's, it's really cool to watch res ball. Um, well, it, that's it, like, <laughs> you know, every other country with soccer you know oh agreed soccer's played in the streets of brazil and you know in the streets of paris and all of these where people because i mean all you need is a soccer ball you know but it's the style of well, how it's yeah. made in brazil I mean, versus yeah. france versus yeah and that's what i'm saying is this 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 res style of basketball is it's that street style it's the run and gun it's a but they bring it to the court. The high school kids play that way. So when you, especially when you get two schools going at it, it's really cool to watch. And uh, when we're at state, my brother's year, there was two really good teams. There's Harden and and Browning. And I'm talking the the whole stadium is packed because the whole town's come out. It's a whole, it's a religious event. It's, it's, it's really cool to watch. Um, And, and you'll see like, that documentary uh, on basketball or nothing, their, their high school stadium is one of the largest high school basketball stadiums in the country. And it's because the fans, the family, the, this, everyone comes to the games. It's a big deal, you know, in, in Chinle, Arizona. And it's like, when you, you've been out to the Navajo nation, you see how, how small, you know, how far it is. Oh, my GoPro's turning off. Um, but, I mean, it's like uh, Texas football. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's its own thing. And what's interesting is you see it, it, you don't just see it in one place like that. You see it in Alaska with the Alaskan tribes and the way they play basketball and how they dominate. You see it in the Washington tribes, the Montana tribes, the South Dakota, North Dakota, you know, Oklahoma, all these places, New Mexico, Colorado, you see these native teams just do really good. And it's just like, it's an interesting way. And you would wish more coaches would recruit them well shoot when it comes to 
<laughs> uh, when it comes to getting recruited for college basketball. Um, and I'm not going to go too far into it, but it's all it's 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 all about AAU basketball. If you're not on an AAU team, you're not going to get recruited. That's no. outside a few people. So I mean, that's that's where that comes in. And it's crazy how how our our society has gone that way uh, with like private private sports like that. Because I, I would even argue like you take baseball and some of the the AAU stuff for that and just different things. Yeah, you know, how that's yeah. changed. And, but that's that's a whole other conversation for a different time. Yeah. <laughs> No, we are going to kind of wander our way back to uh, the Badlands there. So, you know, that's where we meant to start this, which. <laughs> well, we did. We talked about it a little bit. We talked about wall drug and it just kind of mm -hmm. one thing led to the next. You know, we wandered this way, wandered that way, but now we're here. Yeah. But, um, yeah, going, you know, my first time out to the Badlands was last year. Yeah, it was last year when you and I did that big road trip. Yeah. Which was a ton of fun overall. But <clears throat> the Badlands, um, kind of another maybe underrated spot. I mean, it, it does kind of suck that it's in South Dakota, which is probably why it gets underrated because it's in South Dakota. But <laughs> if you're listening from South Dakota, we apologize, but you get it. I mean, and everywhere in that state, they're advertising Mount Rushmore. So it's well, like, I, I've been to the, it, what's that, Sioux Falls on the very far east side? That's nice, right on the river there. I mean, I've never been there, you know. <laughs> really, the only places I've ever been in uh, South Dakota is Wall Drug. Uh, Deadwood, um, and then there's that. Um, I, it's a bit. It's bigger than Deadwood and Wall Drug, and I'm forgetting the name. Spearfish. Spearfish. Rapid right? City. We're on all those no, places. no. We're Rapid City. We didn't stop in Spearfish, did we? We stayed a night that time with Selena and them when we went out um, to uh, Mount Rushmore. When you did not see it when it was snowing that time. <laughs> Oh, but we were just in the hotel then out the, in the morning, right? You were there, though. You ate at an Applebee's. It counts. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like night. I remember we went in a hot tub and we were watching basketball. They had March Madness. So it was yeah. something to do. But, um, but you know, so my, my I guess my sample population for South Dakota is not the best. So, but the Badlands is cool if you've never been and for the people listening um we'll show a picture you mean the people watching <laughs> yeah for the people watching listening we're, we're going to show the picture anyway so if you're listening picture's so, still up there what's really cool is the badlands is like the way of describing it is like these mini mountains cuz they're as big as hills and but they look like mountains but they're just like dirt piles in the way it's piled up and you can get really cool pictures at sunset just because the way it creates like a silhouette just different things like that but yeah. it's just it what it, it really is is bad land and like that's how it got its name you know when the people were moving west when manifest destiny was its sad thing you know the farmers and whatnot were coming out and you know they, they they deem this land bad land but what i like about it and i what i like is you take the negative side you take like the heritage and actually you know we we talk about him a lot <laughs> matt he would know a lot more because his people are actually their reservation is really close to this but um just the sacredness there and there is something about it when you're when you're in the badlands it it almost feels like you're on the moon and it's this like outer world experience. I don't know. I like it. And you just, it, you get these really cool colors of the dirt and then the green grass. Cause you have the American grassland of South Dakota that's out there. And for those of you who don't know what a grassland is, it's like a national forest, but grass. <laughs> so they have national grasslands too out there. Yeah. 
Yeah, it is kind of like a weird eeriness to it. Um, I'm going to see. Yeah, so, I don't, you know, mountains, like I get what you're trying to say with like they're mountains, but they're more like hills. The right. look of them. They look yeah, like. Yeah, the look of them is. It's almost like. And it's the way the dirt has the pattern. The like the, yeah. the the weathering of how the dirt was packed. You know, you could see the age, the year, the watermarks, this and that kind of vibe. Yeah, it's it's just kind of odd. Let's see if what other how I mean, and if you've ever been out, kind of in just in the Midwest in general, it's a very flat land. Just yes. regardless, I mean, shit's just flat. And then you just, you come across like this, like odd, almost like a bunch of, almost like oversized anthills, kind of, just everywhere. Like ants. <laughs> yeah, no ants, no ants. Well, there no, probably are some, but I didn't what, see any. What I like is you, you'll you see the flat land just go straight, 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 and then all, and it's green grass, and then it just drops off into yeah. these weird just bad land <laughs> yeah i mean they're not like the best it's like it's like a weird clay oh here's mm -hmm. actually let me i'm gonna get the picture up again here's a good example of it for yeah people looking at it and yeah exactly and like they're tall like you it, it's a little hike up you know it's sand yeah. it's dirt so you kind of slip and slide on some places yeah. um but yeah, they're fun to walk around. There's, there's, you know, the Badlands Park, it's not that huge of a park, but it's a good, decent size. Mm -hmm. And you can move around it, get around it. There's wildlife, there's rams, um, there's uh, buffalo, bison in that area. We got it's, some rams. Yeah, beautiful. But um, uh, the other cool thing about it is, is it's uh, open terrain, so like, yeah, there's trails and everything, but you can climb anywhere you want and you know. Yeah, it's like a free hike park, I think. Yeah, so you can kind of do go off in any direction you you want. Um, you know, still be careful while you're out on these hikes. <laughs> yeah, when we were out on that one, we took uh one on the east side of the park, kind of where you just walk out to like an overlook um yeah. just to see and we actually came across a rattlesnake. Yeah. And that was kind of interesting because I don't think you've ever come across a rattlesnake before. No, that was that was my first uh, wow. rattlesnake that I'd seen. Well, there's one time when I was younger. I'm not really sure. It would have been a baby rattlesnake if it was, but it was mm -hmm. kind of like, I mean, it was really tiny. So you couldn't tell. But you still got to be careful for those baby ones. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that if they bite you, they don't know how to control the poison in their fangs. And they they end up releasing it all. And those are actually the ones that end up fatal. Yeah. But yeah, here's actually for our viewers, here's a picture of uh, the rattlesnake we saw. Yeah. And I think I have it on, on my one of my social medias, uh, if you guys are following that. Um, but it's a uh, beautiful snake. You could see he's got like, six or seven rattles yeah I mean, yeah it's, it's it's good he's big you know he's probably a good he was probably a good like five six feet yeah i, I remember thinking he was big i just remember because we're we're just finishing this hike and or we're getting towards the end of it and actually no here well i'll finish this story then i'll tell another story but as we're walking yeah i heard the rattle and I thought it was someone shooting a drone up in the air. So I started, I was just like, oh, that's a weird noise. I started looking for this drone. And then off to the side was this rattler, which in reality, we weren't that close to this guy to where you would think the rattle would be necessary. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, I am curious about that because even the kids that stumbled upon it with us, they we were closer yeah and i think but yeah we were a good i mean we've been closer to bears 45 so. feet away from this thing yeah Easy. yeah and he coiled up on us and he rattled a couple times 
I mean, yeah. I mean, here he is coiled up. Really? I mean, <laughs> I mean, you have the lens on for this, so it's like, you know, that's why we have such a great picture. But in reality, I mean, you weren't. We weren't really that close. No, it was it was kind of scary too. I mean, to hear it because it's like yeah. you know, in that moment, that's that animal telling you, "I'm ready." Yeah. Right. You know, knock knock. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, my favorite is when we did see him. Right. So we're finishing it, and the the group that stumbled upon it uh, with us, they were just starting the hike that we had done. Right. So we see it and we go, hey man, rattlesnake right there. And one of the guys in this group just turns right around and says, nope, not doing this. <laughs> and he went straight back to the car. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a good, that was funny. Yeah. No, it was, it was a fun, it was kind of cool because that trip we came across so many wildlife, you know, we came across wildlife in the Grand Canyon with, elk um you know we came across wildlife in you know rocky mountain national park with the big horned sheep um we came across you know lizards in, in utah we came across the bison yellowstone the you know all this like the wolf that was the time we came across a wolf you know That's all right. that like all the wildlife we saw on this one trip and and really all it took was us, you know, just saying, hey, we're taking, you know, seven to 10 days, our vacation time, we're spending it all, we're doing it, we're gambling it on this week. And, you know, we're going to go, we're going to do, do it right. We're going to hit him as much as we can and make it, make it worth our time. And um, It's easy to do. You just got to do it. And that's what we stress. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just sometimes the world the universe sends you a signal and you just got to do it so <laughs> no exactly no I, I i like it i like south dakota i mean from there i mean we gotta go you gotta go to deadwood you gotta experience deadwood um for those of you that have never been to deadwood south dakota it's kind of one of your just tourist towns um where like actual wild wild west shootouts happened you know you hear those stories about i think like rickety jane or Calamity. Calamity Jane was it? Yeah, so and, they, and they reenact it every summer. They do. Yeah, which they is, really. I, and it's I, the local people. They love it. They they make tips from it. They, I think they enjoy it. Oh, uh, for sure, they enjoy it. I mean, more power to them. They doing something they enjoy. So. Well, and then you got things like Sturgis every year. That's really big. The motorcycle rally that you know comes through those areas. So there's casinos and different things like that, which is it's just an interesting atmosphere in the little in the Black Hills in South Dakota. Yeah, it is. And I mean, I've said this about uh, when I go to Sealy. Uh, <laughs> it's a it's a good reminder that there are places like that in. The United States well no I mean I argue I argue the fact that like we get so caught up in our in our American life because we as Americans have decided like it's okay to live like one another and like that's how life should be that we all live like this and you look at like places like Africa where there's still some tribal people living in their tribal ways in the Amazon rainforest and places like that it's like we yeah we're advanced but like if that's still going on on our world, are we truly that advanced? No, you know? we're not. And that's what I mean. And so we're in these beginning states that we need to understand, like, there's a bigger thing here. If, we're, if we think we're this advanced, but we're not, you know, we need to get there as a whole. Because I think that's going to be successful for us as a whole, you know, think about it. Yeah, but you know, we're the United States is oh, it's is big, you know. It's very big. I mean just just from like where I am here in Oregon right now to where you are in Montana, there's a lot of different kind of people in between. Oh, exactly. In between it's that. Interesting. And then it's from where you are to like Chicago. 
exactly different people then from chicago to like the east coast it's all we're very different and that's and i'm just kind of hitting the north which i'm not even hitting kind of the south i get what you're saying i get what you're saying but at the end of the day you know our basic needs and wants are very similar you know we you know we want we want to be happy we want food we want to live long yada 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 the same old same old you know our end goals are the same so i think i think the like coexisting of like yeah i mean to, to accomplish that for the greater good of everyone is what yeah but to achieve those different things is going to mean different for oh, people exactly. in Montana versus people in Oregon, you know? No, oh, agreed. I mean, it's, so, it's crazy. So, like, that's what I mean when you look at, like, when, you, when I make the comment of are we truly that advanced? Because, you know, we like to think we are. We like to think we're at these, like, reaches we are. But it's like, yeah, exactly. They're, we're so different. We're so contradicting and so this way or that way or up way or down way you know that we hit this we hit this spot where it's just like fuck like there's so much more to it and i think we're missing out on that yeah i mean also i think it comes down to the definition of advance yeah no i get and i and i i don't have a good definition for what advance is no because in reality we're just everything we do we're just we're just adding to or making better or simplifying a process it's all processes and how we interact with them and i you know like it's you know oh a hammer how can we make this better you know it started with a rock you know yeah it's like i mean people want to be lazy no and that's i mean i think i think that's the thing that we need to think about too is we want to be lazy but how can we not because that's going to make us better you know how can we look at this in a way that doesn't make us lazy uh people are going to be lazy regardless i know you know as i'm looking through we can be trying to find more good pictures that we can maybe show yeah show the the thing we haven't really pointed out on that about south dakota is that's where, and I mean, we talked about it. We've talked about it before. At least I think we have. Is um, Wind Cave. Wind Cave, yes. We talked about the box etchings uh, going in there. Which I think this is a picture um, of it. There's a Lakota emergent story yeah. out of there. Yeah, that's the like box, the box hatching. or Yeah, the box. Called, but the box work. Mm, yeah. The way the cave does. And it's really the only place it happens in the world essentially you know they talk about it in that in that type of quantity mm-hmm. and what it is i think it's like 90 percent of the world cave yeah. but i think the other thing too is how many caves are unexplored still to this day i think that's a crazy thing to think about well yeah but i mean shoot you know we did we did the tour there and we did like the biggest the longest tour that they had right i don't think so no we did the shortest we did like an hour no, I thought we did the longest. No, the well, we tours that, weren't very long in general. No, they have like a good four hour, or a good eight hour tour, but we didn't do that. I think we did like an hour and a half, something like that. It wasn't that long. Yeah, I know. I just remember all the tours that were available um, that weren't very long. No, they had a lot of little ones um, because they only had a few big ones. They only had like yeah, I don't Mike. remember there being big ones, but <laughs> my memory's not necessarily the best. But no. regardless, regardless, <laughs> it's such a there's so much of this cave, you don't you barely touch it when you go on these tours. You barely yes. touch the amount that oh. they have really explored. You know. That which, but I think the thing is, is the way this cave is, is it's very. There are some narrow shafts and stuff. I think when you look at it, like the way they had to climb and like get from here to there, uh, there was a lot of that kind of stuff that they had with that cave. Well, I mean, even like now with, you know, I mean, we're not even talking about back then when they were doing it by candlelight. Oh my god! I'm, talking, I'm talking about like. 
you know, today. Could you imagine doing it by candlelight? I mean, I just want you to sit there, close your eyes. And like, like she said, she was in an area. She took us, she sat us down in this little auditorium area. And she said, close your eyes. We got real quiet in the cave. And she's like, all right, open them. So it's kind of dark in here. You can't see. You have a candlelight, a lantern that you have. In like this bucket. Yeah, in a, like a like this like not sturdy bucket. And she's like, if you want to like, she's like, it's called wind cave for a reason. It gets windy. You like fall down your bucket. You lose your lamp. Your light burns out. You can't see your bucket. You kicked your bucket when it fell. Like you're done. Like they had ropes and stuff like things like that. Like, ah, man, I just, it would be. One thing I was really surprised uh, with how much light those little like bucket candle flashlights made you know a good amount but like you yeah. also have to i mean shoot it's not like any ordinary flashlight but like i was still really impressed with how much light came out of those but i would um i would argue the fact that your eyes adjust to light and that is the only light in there so they would adjust to that because it's so dark in there and i don't know it's it's interesting yeah it's interesting, but I mean, I, I mean, that's what you knew. You didn't know LED. We know LED, so we're like, wow, that's shitty. But back then, they're probably like, this is the best technology we have. Like, I'm so glad we have these. We're not just going into these blind anymore. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Mm. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Hydrate or Dihydrate. Because uh, you can't drink water, people. Hydrate. If you don't hydrate, you're going to dehydrate. So please hydrate or dehydrate. Uh, enjoy listening. Yeah, no, I, I'm looking it up right now. I got them on the website. Guided tours. You have the Garden of Eden tour, which is one hour. You have the Natural Entrance tour, which is an hour 15. You have the Fairgrounds tour, which is an hour 30, which is what we did. Um, and that was it. Those are the ones when you go there that day, those three are the ones that are available. But then they have also like the candlelight tour, the wild cave tour where like you wear helmets and stuff. Um, they say wear long pants as jeans, uh, full boots, you know, you're in a rugged area. Um, like it's good. It's, it's uh, like two hours long, you know, so you're, you're getting into the longer ones. Um, I think a candlelight one would be scary. Cause that would be like fucking back in the day, like with a candlelight. Yeah. Pass. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, it might be okay. I'll take a flashlight. I'm good. <laughs> um, no. And then you have the other one, which I want to do. The, uh, there's a four hour tour and it's called, it's the wild cave tour, which like you have helmets on, you're going through like the hard to reach places. Like, I think that would be fun. Uh, it says visitors will need to fit through a space that is 10 inches tall. So you're squeezing through these things. I think 10 inches, 10 inches tall, three feet wide. 10 Dang. inches right there. Right. Yeah, I can make it happen. I'm a skinny dude. If you guys don't know. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. Uh, no, I, I mean, limited to 10 people. You have to be minimum age 16. So if you are under 16, you can't do that one. But no, I mean, Wind Cave, I want to go back. I want to do more. There's also Jewel Cave over there. Yeah, uh, Jewel it's Cave. So cool. Cool. It's so cool, everybody. Like, it's so worth it. Just make it happen. Just do it. It's mm -hmm. so worth it. I had some experience down at um, Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. I only, got, I only got to see, like, not even the cherry on top. I saw the stem. Just a little bit of Mammoth Cave. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to go. But I, I showed up too late in the day, so I couldn't schedule a tour. Mm -hmm. And I was only down there for that day. But it's it's definitely one on my list. Go back to Cave. Because they there's boats in that one. Um, just different cool things. Like, it's such a 
we live in such a cool world. And, you know, there's caves like that in New Zealand and Africa and Europe and China and all these awesome places. Like, check them out. Yeah, no, for sure. Caves are super cool. Um, I mean, if you really if, – if, if you just need to go out and see, like, how cool caves are, but, you know, you're afraid of the dark and, like, claustrophobic whatnot – go back to like the first planet earth series right they have one that's literally called caves and you get to see how dope caves are just in that like hour-long little documentary and that will get you going I mean, it really will i remember actually i remember when, it, when uh, planet earth came out i think it came out in 2007 and or six something like that and i had a science teacher uh, in the seventh grade that he would just show us planet earth whenever like it was like movie day you know like how you have those days in middle school like mm-hmm. planet earth boom boom i watched i don't know how many times i watched that like the first episode where it's like kind of like all of them you know oh yeah i don't know how many times i've watched that episode alone is gotta be in like the 20s easily you know and that's a lot that's a lot of time for that episode. I mean, dude, you're talking to like, I love, I love all of that shit. So I watch. Oh, I like, I don't knock that, it, you know. But it's like because of that, like it yeah. was like, every once in a while we would change it up, but no, it was like, that's the go-to. I've watched that whole series probably like close to fifty times. Oh, I believe it. I watch. I mean, I love David Attenborough. That guy's like, <laughs> I absolutely love David Attenborough. I want to get into some of his older shit. Yeah, right. Some of I want to get in that like when he was like in the twenties filming in the in the. So like, what was it? I think yeah. it's. So it's this new. It's the newest series that they've just come out with, which is Seven Worlds, One Planet. Fantastic! Highly, highly recommend. What's it on? It's BBC. It's all, they're all BBC. Well, just so people know. Oh yeah, they're they're it's all BBC. I mean, I just recently got them on Blu-ray for my home. Oh, but, wow. Um, one of them, I can't remember if it's the Asia episode or the South America episode. Um, at the very end of it, they start talking about they do like a behind the scenes of how they captured certain scenes. Yes. So they did the orangutans, the orangutans. And they showed footage of David Attenborough's first time to this jungle singing the orangutans. And it was, it's like black and white footage. I mean, it's that old. And it was, it's really cool to see, you know, a young spry David, (laughs) Sir David Attenborough in action. So he's, he is a great guy. Uh, He'll, he has definitely left an impact, uh, on many people's lives around the world oh, um right he's like awesome i think he last time i checked i wish i knew this off the top of my head i think he's like 92 oh he's old yeah he's he's old but he's lived such a happy life too that he's gonna live long mm-hmm. um i mean he has lived long too but it's been 94 yeah He's the same age as Queen Elizabeth. She's that old too. I mean, we're living in like that time where modern medicine is able, especially if you have the money like they do. I mean, shoot. Like, like you can you can keep yeah. you can keep alive a little bit longer if you have the right needs and the right, you know, you do the right things for your body and whatnot. Yeah. But dang. Like I was actually watching, I watched this documentary um, where they talked about like the centurions. And like the blue zones and like the places where people like, like the average age is like above a hundred. Like, it's like crazy. Like how old people get. Oh yeah. Yeah. The happy way of life, you know, living and always working your brain and always doing good things and healthy things and living like a happy lifestyle, relax and do that. And I think part of that too, is also finding yourself, finding what you want, finding your nature, finding what makes you happy because that's what's going to make it so that you live to be a hundred, you know? Yeah, I mean, the research that's been coming out on long lifespans right now is they're saying 
is reducing your stress and not having chronic stress. And I mean, stress is a very broad term, you know, so uh, it's not just like, oh, I got the stress of this deadline all the time. It's not just that kind of stress. It's stress that happens in your body, like a chronic inflammatory state, right? Which you're going to see things with like your diabetes, your autoimmune disease, you know, that goes into your diet and your exercise and stuff. But it also has to do with the people around you, right? Are they adding stress? So, I mean, when I say stress, reducing that stress, stress is a very broad term. Exactly. So, but I mean, shoot, David Attenborough's got to be doing something, right? Right. I go ahead. He's probably because he spends all that time in nature. Yeah. yeah. Nature's so. a great place. You can, you can really be at one with it. Like, I mean, that kind of leads to some exciting things we got going on. You know, um, you, on the other hand, uh, you're coming up to, uh, you got some stuff coming up this weekend, huh? Yeah. My, uh, my, thankfully, thankfully my time here in the North Oregon coast is coming to an end. I'll be heading back down to Humboldt here this weekend, which it'll be bittersweet because I'm heading down there to kind of move out and I don't know what my next plan is. But while I am down there, I will be taking full advantage of those amazing redwoods. <laughs> so, and all of the amazing, um, I might even take a trip out to Fern Canyon which is where they filmed part of the second uh, Jurassic Park. Oh, wow. Uh, you're curious. Um, well, the Redwoods, the famous Redwoods, uh, home to Hyperion, the tallest tree in the world. The Redwoods are also home to uh, episode five and six of Star Wars, uh, the Ewoks. Um, so kind of kind of something. And they're also home to for some Ewoks. The homeless guy that lives in the trees, you know? No, <laughs> no, there are homeless that live in the trees. I know. I said there are, it's home to Chuck, the homeless guy that lives oh. in the trees. <laughs> yeah. I and mean, we yeah, like to think home. Bigfoot. Yeah. He's there. He's there. We, we're going down there. We're going, we're going to go test our eyes out. We're going to go look high, look low, look through, look around, you know? We're going to see if we see Bigfoot. If not, you know, we're going to see some pretty cool stuff along the way. Yeah. I mean, the Redwoods are really cool. It, a walk through the redwoods makes you realize like where they get their inspiration for like fairy tales and stuff we're like that. Ants, dude. I think we're ants. We're colonizing this earth the way ants would, you know, because we just explore and want to see what's next, what's new, what's this, what's that. And, you know, we're just using its natural resources and then we're going to move on to the next planet. Eventually, well, you know, we're going to force ourselves to get to that point. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah. Like, let's be real, then we'll restart life on another planet, and it'll be like, well, we don't know what happened before, so we got to figure it out all over again, restart. I mean, that's a whole, there is <laughs> an actual conspiracy theory like that. I know, no. But I, I, that's way too deep. In no, I'm not going not there. I'm not looking to go there tonight. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, shoot, you what, you got you got a fun, fun plan uh, for uh, you. You know, we talked about it before the medicine wheel going up there. I was able to go up in uh, the Rougarou. Uh, follow me on Instagram to see the Jeep and all its fun places as we look for Bigfoot. Um, we went up to uh, Bighorn Canyon with Matt in May, and the snow was taller than the car, um, and it was snowed in to where we had to go to get to uh, the medicine wheel. And we've talked about the medicine wheel before, and you know, it's spiritual belief and it's healing and it's greatness and all the good it brings and how it's built on some of the oldest geological rock found in the Rocky Mountains and just, just all the crazy stuff like that that they talk about uh, when it comes to these these structures. And I, I want to go back up there. I, you know, it's kind of a sacred place in the Bighorns uh, for Native people. Um, I want to go check it out because um, I've never been. Um, you know, we got close to it, but I'm, I, I planned on Saturday. I threw the invite out to a few people, um, got some tentative yeses. So <laughs> we'll see, we'll see if we have anyone join us, but if not, I'm just going to get in the car and go. Cause you know, who, who wants to spend their weekend sitting at home doing nothing, you know, like get out, get out and go do something. Yeah. Right. A hundred percent. 
I try to get out at least do something at least do something outside get some grounding in put yeah. the soil ground but i mean anyways we are coming up on an hour so wow. i what? gotta be that guy and say uh, we gotta ra- start closing it up uh like with the final words so so final words my guy you know don't don't hesitate um, with with the decisions you're making. I think that's those are my final words this week. I want I want you know like we've talked about it. We've talked about Iceland, you know, in the near future, and I I, I you know rather than hesitating and saying like let's do it, let's do it. I'm gonna look into actual cost, what we can do, what we can see. And just kind of start planning it because like why not let's make it happen let's figure it out and you know don't hesitate people figure out your next adventure love it love it uh final words of wisdom from the reverend um stay beautiful people you guys are amazing um thank you all for listening you guys are awesome i want to leave you with a quote that i wrote down recently I've been on somewhat of a spiritual journey myself lately, and this one really impacted me, so I want to read it for everyone out there. Uh, here it is. It, it's important to draw wisdom from many different places. If you take it from only one place, it becomes rigid and stale. Uh, if you're curious where that came from, I don't know if you've ever seen the children's show, uh, avatar the last airbender but it actually comes from that show um i don't know how i came across it but i like it i do too i it reminds me it reminds me of this one uh that's it's choose your enemies wisely because over time you become like them because you study how they work and what they do and how they do it um and it's just something to live by something to think by (laughs) Uh, amen uh, but again thank you guys all for uh listening um, hit us on our socials at quartz lake productions hit us at the rougarou hit us if you want to email us you want to be on our podcast you have something cool shoot us an email at wandering ways pot is it wandering ways podcast at gmail wandering ways podcast which means W-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-G-W-A-Y-S-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. No. <laughs> no, but definitely check it out. Shoot us an email. Uh, we've talked to some of our friends um, about coming on. We've got some cool guests lined up for you that are going to be cool to talk to. Hopefully you learn something from them like we will. Um, but yeah, stay tuned. Yeah. And awesome things coming up. But peace out, everybody. Bye.